Hello and welcome to Console Shock episode 40, retro and non-game chat with me Trev and Stu. Hi there Trev, how are you? Yeah, not too bad actually, how about you? Yeah, I'm alright, I'm alright. I've gone all... Obviously, I've always been very, very retro, but since moving into my new flat, I've now set up, I think I told you on uh, WhatsApp the other day, I've set up my little CRT TV and, I, and I've got my N64 with my... Whoa, um, hold on, hold on a sec, hold on a sec. So we've had this ongoing saga mm. of when is Stu going to plug in a, compu- a, a, a console since he's moved and it's always been, oh, not yet, I haven't got it ready yet, it's still stuff still in boxes. So you've, you've done it now, you've done oh, that. I, I've, I've done it and it's the best decision I ever made. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have one system at a time. For the reason, I know you like to have them all set up, and in the past, I love to have them all set up. But I find that I think if I have one set up, I can go, what, well, I'm really going to focus on this machine, I'm going to get a new, few games for it, um, you know, yeah. borrow a few from the shop, and sort of play some of the older games I've got, and just really focus on one machine. And then, you know, after two, three weeks, I go, okay, right, let's put that back in the cupboard, Let's go out of PS2. Right, let's go oh, out of GameCube. I let's go out of Mount I saw some of the games you borrowed from the shop. I think you got Little Samson. I think you borrowed that. Musha yeah. on the Mega Drive. Uh, yeah, Mega Man yeah. Wily Wars. Some good choices there, man. Talking of, talking about the shop, we actually got in, traded in. And, oh, man, I wanted to borrow this game. It was uh, Radiant Silver Gun on the Sega Saturn. Oh, yeah, I saw that, yeah. You posted bloody, that. Yeah, bloody hell. I should say, actually, that, uh, mm. you know, if you listen to the podcast, you should like play nation games on facebook because you do post uh, sort of gems that come in don't you yeah so in the moment in our display cabinet we've got the panzer dragoon saga next to radiant silver gun and i, I don't want to say two of the best games you can of- get them posted as well can't you someone in in facebook says oh i want that can you post it to me you guys can do that as well exactly yeah. Um, but I, so, so I wouldn't say two of the best games on the Sega Saturn, but they're certainly two of the rarest games. And Panzer uh, uh, Radiant Silver Gun, I have gotten that on the Xbox 360, and it's, it's, it's a very, very good shooter. I've uh, gone back into a, in terms of collecting, because uh, it kind of falls into the main sort of subject we're going to talk about in a bit. But um, yeah, I've kind of gone back into NES mode now. Because um, I sort of said before that I'm unusual because I grew up with one in the UK. Obviously, most people were like, I had, you know, like I, I did have like Mega Drive and Amiga and all that. That was actually later on I started off with the NES. Mm. Um, so I'm kind of like like your, your average American YouTuber. That's like, but I, I don't have the, I, my nostalgia for it is kind of actual, well, not saying it's not real for everybody, but um for me it's actually real because it was something that i did actually have and play as a very early experience of video games but yeah, so yeah i've got back into picking those games up but there's just hard it is hard i'm up to about 60 now complete in box but um yeah it's it's hard they're just super expensive they really are it's not too bad it, it depends what you're going for um yeah i mean if if you if you think a retro game should be ten pound and nothing more. It will always be expensive, but yeah. you can pick up for the cost of, you know, twenty, thirty quid. You can get some decent deals for complete in box. You'll mm. pay, pay cheap if you just want the cartridge, mm. um, which is probably the best way to go, really. Unless you're weird about having the boxes as well, like I am. I've had a few, like um, I, I do do the CEX roulette every now and then, mm. um, which you see other YouTubers do, where um, they sort of buy two copies of a game. <laughs> and I've mentioned this before, haven't I? Um, and you sort of, you know, in hopes that you'll get one. There was one, they had one copy of um, Monster in My Pocket, which is a Konami game based on the Monster in My po- Pocket toys. They had one, and it was 30 quid, and I thought, but it was at their boxed level. Is it, is it even a good game? It's actually quite good, yeah. Uh, pretty okay. good platform. It's made by Konami. Yeah. Uh, also, when they're in their glory days, uh, this would be sort of '92 time, '93. Quite a late NES game as well, uh, but it's actually a good game. Yeah, um, you should try it out on an emulator or something or a real NES. Um, but yeah, uh, it's it's not cheap. I mean, you can go for 50, 60 quid, but that one 30 quid got it, and it was the box was absolutely battered. It looked like you'd been through a war. Yeah. Um, so the cartridge is fine, but I just I just sent it back. Good thing about that is you can send it back, and they'll yeah. refund you. So it's kind of no 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 risk. Um, so that's kind of, I've got that game in my sights because I used to like the toys. So having the game, um, 
But yeah, some of them, like we we got we only got a very small percentage of the library that they got in the states. There's only about two hundred and sixty seventy PAL releases, um, and they're even more awkward than that because our Nintendo were just mental with region locking the shit out of everything, mm. and they would region lock bits of Europe against each other as well. Because you got the PAL B and the PAL A's, which you probably have trouble with when you get them in your shop. Mm. someone buys a pal b game which is italy and like germany and a few others takes it home and like, it's not working but yeah we our region's palais which is like us australia and france i think and a few others but there's some games that came out in pal b that didn't we didn't get here like turtles tournament fighters wwf king of the ring that only came out in pal b we didn't get it at all and i think we got a couple in palais that they didn't get bloody weird i don't know what nintendo's rationale behind it was um but yeah so it's kind of fiddly um uh turtles 3 as well that didn't come out that was power power b so yeah it's there's more to it than just the price there's loads of weird little quirky kind of crap that you have to uh account for as well so yeah it's um kind of leads us on actually doesn't it to what we're going to talk about you've already touched on it with you getting your consoles out Mm. Um, it is what what setups do we have, and maybe what are we looking to to achieve in terms of our not just necessarily retro gaming, but gaming in general. What is our setup? By that I mean, what have we got in our living room or game room or whatever it is? What cables do we use to get our old consoles hooked up? I think, to I think that's gonna, that's going to be the biggest thing is, is how we connect them. So you've got one, yeah. You're planning on just having the one, yeah. Sort of. Just one setup at a time. It's just nice. Is that alongside like the PS4 or the Xbox One, or is that just completely just that one? It's it's, it's in the spare room. So basically, in the living room, I've underneath my TV, I rotate three different machines. No, actually, that's a lie. I've got five different machines, but I rotate three of them. Right. So I've got yeah. my Switch under there because it doesn't take up much space. That's permanently plugged in. I've got my SNES Mini permanently plugged in, um, and then I've got an Xbox One X. Then I've got a PS4, and then I've got an actual Xbox 360. So I basically take one out, plug the other one in, you know, whenever I want to play on, you know, a PS4 game, uh, Xbox 360 game. Then in the spare room, I've got a 14-inch Sony CRT, and then that's got a really lovely picture, um, and I just put a um, HDMI and RGB SCART lead in, into that for, for whatever system I've got. So, so that's not set up as like with another bunch of your game games console. And that's just there for you to go just, and that's grab that's, the that, console. That, that's one. So what, once I've, you know, I, I said at the moment, I'm playing Ridge Racer 64, uh, really, really enjoying that. So what once I get, you know, bored with the N64, take it out. I might put a PlayStation 1 there. I, when I get bored with that, I put a GameCube. Super Nintendo, you know, NES, um, you know, my multi mega, what's I've got from you, Trev? Yes. So something like that will come out. And then, as I said before, it, it'll just be, I can really sort of concentrate on that system and get, rather than having them all set up and then, oh, God, I don't really know what to play. Yeah. So, um, so you, so you, you sort of stick to maybe a couple of retro systems that are kind of ready to go. Um, and, you switch, and you switch those, those out, but you've got your permanent sort of current gen and maybe like just sort of last gen. They're actually easy to keep out, aren't they? Because you can stand them vertically for the most part. Um, yeah, that, that's fine. And they've all got practically the same connectors on there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. In my one, so just I'll unplug one, put the next one in, you know, and, you, and, and you're good to go, really. Um, they're all connected to the Wi-Fi, so there's no no problems there. And, and H- HDMI, you often get four or five sockets these days anyway. Don't, yeah. don't, you haven't got to get splitters. And even if you do, it's a digital signal, so you can get away with a cheapo HDMI switch because the signal is digital. It's not. There's nothing to degrade it, really. Yeah, it right. the same. I've used um, HDMI uh, splitters before, and I've had no problems with them, even sort yeah, of cheap yeah. ones. Same here. I'd, I'd, I'd reckon, reckon, uh, recommend them. They're much better than, you know, the cheapy RGB SCART blocks. There's a lot of factors to screw those up, isn't there? That's the thing, yeah. I, I, exactly. If they're, if they're not all connected properly, if they're not properly shielded, yeah, if cross talk and... all, you, you get the no end of trouble. Yeah, exactly. The end of the tra- cable. And I used to have, I had a big splitter box, a Joytech one. And it was a, it's a really good product, and you switch between them, and it had a little screen on there, and you could program it in to say 
you know, SNES, GameCube. So you could switch between which ones. And I actually placed that too close to my TV. And it had a lot of interference. So you get the interference on the screen. And then once I moved it away, it was... The it's not shielded greatly, perfectly. Yeah, you can get it's, that. Yeah. Exactly. So you get a much better picture. Let's just do so. That's that's one that we probably should touch touch upon and go through what it is. So the RGB thing. So what is it? It's basically most retro consoles. Some of them don't have this. Uh, there's kind of two types of video, isn't there? There's composite. Well, um, I'll, I'll say there's there's three. There's RF. Yeah. Yeah. The poorest one is it's RF, which you know is. In the UK, Time. that's probably what we used nearly all the time in the nineties and well, the eighties and the nineties. Yeah, yeah. But we didn't have the yellow and the yellow, the yellow jack on on TVs for the for even for, for composite in those days, did we? We didn't even have that. No, exactly. So you, you, you didn't have that, and then then the next one was the yellow, white, and uh, red, which is the co composite or yes. or AV. Some people call it. Yeah, and, yeah. And that's that again that that's a much better signal than um a rf signal but it's not as good as um rgb so rgb or a lot of people say scart socket you know your scart lead because that's the actual end of it and why the rgb is so good because it splits up the the, the r it, which is the red the g which is the green and the B, which is the blue, and yeah. then the sound comes through separately as well. So you, you're no not interference. getting interference where everything comes through one line. And it's it's just, you know, you can play retro gaming in my eyes. I know you've got a different opinion than me, Trevor, is yeah. get a CRT TV, get an RGB, you know, the, 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 get a, uh, what's it, Retro Cables, is it? What's the name yes. of that company? Uh, retro Game Cables, yeah, in the UK, they're great, yeah. And, and you know, spend 11 spend 12 £13, pound, get a well-made made cable. They're not expensive, really, are they? No, and then, but, and then you don't made buy a cheap one. Do. Don't yeah. buy a cheap one. Buy a quality one, and, you, you know, it's go the games will just look, Oh my god, they look so much better than there are a few however you remember them back in the yeah, day. Yeah, the, the, there are a few factors that can affect the quality of the the connection. So we've mentioned that HDMI is not an issue because it's all all digital. But with an analog signal like RGB SCAR or or composite or RF, you're going to be hopefully you should be always be aiming for RGB. Many yeah. consoles can output that by default. You haven't got to mess with anything at all. Some you have mm. to mod them. To get it out of them, like a NES, for example, can't yeah. do RGB without a mod, and it's not a cheap mod, unfortunately. You can solder yourself. Uh, but a Mega Drive, Super Nintendo, as, for, as a quick example, they've got RGB built in, as does like anything after that, really, like PlayStation, Saturn, Dreamcast, uh, PS2, Xbox. They they can all do it. Um, so, and but, but there are things as well. Some depending, there are cases where different models of those consoles. Mm. Um, have better quality RGB than others. And basically what I mean is things like jail bars. You'll see faint, darker sort of columns of pixels. Uh, sometimes not so faint, sometimes quite sort of, you know, uh, stark. Often on solid color, you'll you'll notice that. Um, mm. and there's a good website, which is, I think, Retro RGB, which tells you exactly what that looks like. And some consoles, they uh, don't have that at all. It'll just work. Uh, a good example is... I've got two sort of Super Nintendos. I've got a PAL Super Nintendo, um, and I've got a Super Famicom. And I, I use my Super Famicom as my main one because all the games will be the correct speed, 60 hertz. Again, the 50, 60 hertz thing, if you don't know about that, we've got an episode, a few episodes back about it, where we chatted in depth about 50 versus 60 hertz. But anyway, um, I, so I use the Famicom for that, Super Fam Famicom, which is the Japanese Super Nintendo. Trouble anything with it. It's got RGB, but it does have jail bars. And that's uh, apparently I've got, a, a, well, it, it's rare, not in a collectible sense, but it's one model where the video circuitry was just badly shielded. So oh. it produces, it doesn't make the games unplayable or anything, but you could just no, notice it on solid blocks of color. I think what you find is that a lot of the consoles, things like the Mega Drive, and I think the Super Nintendo comes to mind, you probably know the model numbers better than I do or, or, or a little bit more detail there. Yeah. But you, you, t you tend to find that, that the, the um, Super Nintendo, later in its life, 
they thought, okay, there's got five chips in here. Let, let's put them all onto one chip or yeah. to two chips. It happens with most consoles, actually, as the and, years yeah, go by. Yeah. Again, yeah. I think the Mega Drive, because people always say Mega Drive 1 looks better than the Mega Drive 2. Personally, I, 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 I can never see it. I don't know about the same, yeah. If you ever get a chance, never, ever buy a Mega Drive 3. No, they're horrendous. Uh, they're dog shit. Or a top oh loader God. NES, the NES 101. There was a PAL version, actually, that came out in Australia. Oh, but if you, there? Yeah, there is, actually, yeah, but because oh, wow. PAL is kind of crap anyway. Um, but in, in the US, the, the NES top loader, which is the very cool-looking updated NES that came out very, very late in the NES's life. It was like 93, so the last sort of year and a bit, I guess, of its life. Um, so look it up. NES 101 is the model. Uh, but yeah, that has, um, it's actually crap because it doesn't, it doesn't even have composite or RGB. It just has RF. So you've got the worst video. There are some very, very rare units of it where people were so pissed off with the video quality because they thought it would have the same because the regular NES has composite built in. Mm. Um, so you don't have to do anything with that. Um, they took it out for this remodel, which is baffling um but some people complained and they sent uh, nintendo said oh send us the nes 101 and we'll we'll, we'll um, put a, a multi-out connector on it so you can get um composite um so like, oh okay cool so people sent them off and got them modded by nintendo so it was an official oh, wow. thing with a molded multi-out or it might be just the um the the, the red and yellow um and white um sockets for well, red and white probably there's no mon there's no stereo on the nes but yeah so yeah if you can pick up one of those off ebay you might be in better luck Mm. but still can't do rgb so it's a bit of a weird one so you're only going to get i mean the nes has pretty good composite video um i'd say I, i've used it on um with the composite with av plenty of times and and i and i think it, it look it looks good it looks good enough and yeah the games, they never had quite the same sort of effects and things as yeah. the nintendo games or the Sega Saturn games and things. So I, I less I, pronounced, isn't it? Yeah, it's because the games were a little more basic. It wasn't a, a, as bad. You mainly get the dot crawl where you sort of get a, a shimmer to sort of, uh, mm. let's say, there's like a a scene with a bunch of trees in the background with two or three good colours used to to represent those trees. And as you walk across the scene, like it's a scrolling, uh, you know, or actually a good example is Contra. Or probo texture as it was here the sort of the first jungle level you look at the like the trees and the rocks underneath when you move across they'll kind of slightly shiver and shudder and there'll be like a jitteriness to to to, to the color that's sort of that's called dark crawl uh, that's the main thing you'll get and also there's, it's not as sharp um but you can modernize uh to get there's a guy in the uk that does it for about 100 quid so yeah not cheap um but when you do that you'll get really nice crisp almost like an emulator output really chunky sharp pixels um i am hoping to do that with my nares um to get rgb out um and i think it just lets you plug a mega drive scart lead i think he puts a mega drive kind of socket on the back of it very discreetly uh, it's just in the back so it's not you know uh, it doesn't hack your case to pieces to fit it in um and there's that um so yeah I know that's there are consoles that don't have it the pc engine is another one you have to get an add-on to get RGB, um, but it can be done. Um, the 3DO doesn't have RGB or the Amiga CD32. Uh, again, they can be modded, mm. um, but they they don't have uh, their their composite by default. But you can mod this stuff in um, and get it to work. Um, to be honest, personally, it wasn't until I got to the probably the Sega Saturn that I started to understand there's this thing called SCART. Because I got a oh, TV that had a socket in the back. Exactly. Uh, first if I, time. If I had any spare money, I think I'd rather buy. Well, when I was younger, I certainly rather buy a new game rather than a lead. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it wasn't until then that I got the Saturn. I thought, oh, could, does the other consoles I've got? Can I pop this kind of cable in and get good quality again? And yeah, there was obviously a PlayStation One, and there was like, uh, you know, there tend to be about twenty quid or something. I didn't know anything about it being RGB or anything. I just thought it's a SCART lead, and that's better than what I have. Mm, um, so I made a point of getting them at that point, and then I realized, oh, I need to get some – do they make things where I can plug four of these in at once? And that's when I sort of got a switch, a uh, SCART switch. Um, 
so yeah so that's kind of basically our rgb it's the best quality signal that you'll get from old consoles some of them have it built in um mega drive super nintendo saturn playstation some don't um tends to be the 8-bit ones doesn't it um i think the master yeah. does have rgb though know, but the um NES, uh, I guess your Commodore 64, can that do RGB or do you have to? No. Oh, Commodore, well, yeah, yeah. The Commodore 64, oh, I'm 99% sure it does. The Amiga does. Oh, yeah, uh, that's the, definitely uh, the, big, it. the big chunky uh, socket in the back. Yeah. Uh, in fact, you have to put that awful like m modulator, didn't you, into the Amiga 500 that was just whacking the thing that hung out the back of it in a really loose fit. That added the, the RF socket and the um and and the, comp the composite um, video as well. I think remember that thing. It did be. It was almost black and white, wasn't it? It wasn't. You I could get. You know, well, I, I used to use my five hundred through RF. Um, with yeah, the, no, with I, the, I, uh, cer I certainly did. But another um sort of two cables we haven't sort of talked about is um, S video as well. Yeah, I've never used it uh, really. Oh. I think. The CD32 has it. Uh, That's right, but yeah. My TV doesn't support um, S video through SCART, so I get a black and white picture. So, mm. no, uh, it's better than composite, not as good as RGB, but close yeah, to RGB is my was, experience. Watching a lot of sort of YouTubers, as, as we all do in America, they were, oh, you know, yeah, get the S video. Oh, you get a great picture. And and I was always, always of the opinion, well, no, well, it's not quite as good as RGB. And no, I remember. I Watching a video, this, this guy, oh, I think his name's Stastastic or something. Oh, yes, like he's that. cool. Yeah, yeah, and, old and, guy. Yeah, that, that's it. And he, oh, he, he always made me laugh because every, every week I used to watch his, his, his videos. He goes, oh, I've been to another boot fair, brought another PlayStation One. I couldn't just resist this deal. <laughs> yeah. it, it was seven quid with a pile of shit. And I was like, Oh, no, what have you bought another Bloody one? sports games with it. I know. And, and he would just go, Oh, I couldn't resist this one. I had to buy, and it was like every week he'd bought another PlayStation yeah, he One. Got him collecting because it made him depressed or something, or he's I, I, I think, I think or something. But I remember he did a video. But he started he, again, I think. He managed to get a uh, S video cable, a monster gold S video cable, and when Listen it comes to make monster, yeah, yeah, when it comes to these older cables, when when if they cost sort of you know you know 30 40 pounds and they're all gold plated that that's in a lot of cases that's not that's not gump that's that does improve the picture it's um, a better conductor isn't it gold it, of, uh... exactly it, it's, it's a better conductor so that goes back to the start of the video um or, or or the podcast when i was saying well actually you don't want to get a um you know a 299 from china um, no. um rgb scott lead uh, you know they're there you're not going to get the best picture and especially going to hd tv it's going to look absolutely awful but he got one um this gold-plated s video lead uh, i believe he got it for america this monster one to use on his n64 because that's the best output it has and they actually got a really nice pitch on it from what i remember um so is it, that, that 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 that's an all uh, uh, one as well. It's got it an absolutely horrific picture through through composite the, the N sixty four. It, it's playable. It, it's not like literally like doesn't make your games unplayable. It's just it's very very soft. Uh, lots of dot crawl. Um, the anti aliasing that you know, the smudging that the NES does and the N sixty four does to everything is even more kind of pronounced. But you've got an RGB one. That's you? it. I, a friend of mine modded uh, my N64, so it gives it actually RGB out. And, and I went and bought a nice cable for it. And, and and the picture, it just looks so, so much clearer than what I certainly it, remember. It is, a big, it is a stark difference then when you compare the two. It's like, wow, that's like, you know. Oh, yeah. The, I mean, if you look on um, ooh, My Life in Gaming, um, I'm surprised we haven't talked about this already, but there are yeah. some guys in America, and you, you know that they. I think we're touching the surface of the technicalities behind it compared to what they know. Uh, oh yeah, the, the experts. Yeah, they've done I think some good demonstrations of you know going between uh, an AV out or you know composite compared to a proper RGB out and on an N64, and it's. In my, in my opinion, it's it's night and day. Yeah, I need to get it done. I mean, they're actually they're actually fairly cheap just to buy one that's already been done, as opposed to getting yeah, some just, just, 
like just, 50, 50 quid, I think. Yeah, exactly. You know, buy one, you get a much nicer picture. But I was going to say the other cable, which is, I'd say, semi-retro, is component cable. Yes. So this first came out on well, maybe three or four different machines, but it was it came out originally on the PS2, uh, the Xbox, uh, the GameCube. It, it was on the Wii, the Xbox 360, or P- PS3 as well. And it's just... Um, it's just a super high quality analog cable, isn't it? Analog yeah. like a SCART, but you can actually get HD out of it. Exactly. And um, when I actually get around to setting up my PlayStation 2, I'm going to see what it looks like on my 4K TV through a component. And fingers crossed, it'll be acceptable. If not, I'll be back to the RGB on the CRT. But what's your opinion of uh, component leads, Trev? Yeah, we actually chatted about this, didn't we? Before? Yeah, we did. I was, I was leading um, you up there. I was yeah. aiming towards that. <laughs> Yeah, because obviously my setup's a bit different to yours. I've actually. Oh yeah, really what's your setup? Much. Take us through your setup. Yeah, so you've obviously got a, a sort of thing where you've got your kind of your modern consoles, and you've got a way to sort of quickly swap out your a retro one at, at whatever one you kind of focused on at that point. Because um, I I like having them all available, you know, um, without having to, to, to hook them all up. I actually want them out ready to go. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, I'm not one of these big American YouTuber people that have a big game room and they've got a huge IKEA unit with 10, 12 consoles all plugged in, cable managed and everything. You know, I can I go and disappear into that room and play and then, you know, all that stuff. I, um, I'm not sure I'd even want that, even if I did have a room. I'd probably have it to store my stuff, but not to actually play in there. But anyway, so I've got a, um, an interesting setup where I've actually just got a four sort of um, segment IKEA unit. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but it's like uh, it looks like a, just like a, a, a square with four squares inside it, um, and that's actually on casters, um, so it could be sort of moved around if it gets in the way. Um, and I've got uh, the current gen, and uh, I've got a PS4 Pro, and in one of the so picture the four the four uh, empty um, areas inside this this, this unit. Um, so in the upper left, I've got like a Wii, a PS3, Xbox 360, and a PS4 Pro, and they're all kind of plugged in through a HDMI switch. And I've actually got a, a big 10 socket power strip that's like mm-hmm. sort of Velcroed to the side of of, of the unit. All right, so all right, our cables can just come out and go straight into that, and it's not on the floor, so that means I could still wheel it out. And then on the other side to that, so on the top, on the, the top right. Um, in there, I've sort of got there's a little divider sh- shelf you can stick in the IKEA so which can actually make more shelves out of the two sort of boxes that you've got in there. Mm. So I've got that in there, and in that uh, I've got like my Super Famicom, um, and I've got a Mega Drive one and the Mega CD. I've got a little bit of space that I've shoved my Switch in as well in there, the dock, and then below that in the in the the hole below that I've got the um, I've got my PC, my laptop uh, gaming PC. Pe- PC and that kind of just rests on top of my original Xbox because there's enough room for them to go in there. And again, I've got another power strip, same one with enough sockets, Velcro to that side. Mm. Um, and the one on the other side has a cable going into that, so that's providing power to the other one as well. And then that just goes into the wall from a single ca- cable. And then the final thing is the very bottom right, I've got like a Sega Saturn and a 3DO, but the Saturn's in such a way that I can plug that out and stick a, a different one in if I get an urge to switch something out. Um, so I haven't got everything out, although actually there's also a bit of room on top because the TV I've got on there has a bit of a gap between its stand where it, where it actually is sitting on top of the unit and the actual TV begins. So there's actually a gap there. So I actually managed to stick a Dreamcast and my N64 and a, and a slim PS2 in there. Mm. Um, so I've got like, yeah, um, I've got a decent amount of uh, retro consoles all out. Um, the main pain at the moment is the SCART ones. Um, cause again, I try and do RGB SCART. Um, and there's also like a couple of consoles that are only, um, only use compo- uh, composite, like the NES and the, um, the 3DO. So they, they actually have the three cables are going into a little SCART adapter. So they use SCART as well. Um, I used to have a Bandridge, which is a very good quality SCART switch box. 
but the one I used failed um, oh. on me. Yeah, really weird. Uh, uh, it was actually the, the um, My Life in Gaming guys, I do actually uh, recommend the Bandridge ones, but it just uh, the signal would just cut out. And I, I was worried it was, uh, I think at first it was happening when I was using a, oh, I've got a PC engine as well. I've got a PC engine that sat on top of my, God, I've forgotten a couple here. I've got an Xbox One X. Uh, it's got a, a PC engine on top of it, not on the bit where the vent is. Also, people will be like, "You can't, don't cover the vent bit, the bit that isn't a vent," because that's tiny. A PC engine that can that can fit anywhere. There's a little nook, um, and also all of these, all the retro consoles have ever drives, so I don't have to get up and try and fish out a cartridge and put a cartridge back in. They all have, have ever drives, so I've got pretty much the entire library of those consoles there, ready to go. Um, on all of them, and and uh, I've tried to source wireless controllers for the older ones where I can. Um, for the Mega Drive, I use the Crix Joys, the two Zs at the end. Crix, who makes the the Ever Drives, he makes weirdly he makes just one wireless controller. He makes a Mega Drive wireless controller looks identical to the Sega Six Button one, except it's wireless, uh, and it's not not infrared like proper like um, two point four. Um, gigahertz wireless like you have like a wave bird or an xbox 360 controller mm. um, and that's great so there's no cables coming out of that um on my nes i've got an 8-bit doe bluetooth controller again works great and then on the snes i've got the snes 8-bit doe wireless controller um so they're covered the satin's obviously not good. that that's a wired <laughs> controller the 3do wired hopefully there'll be solutions to them at some point someone will come up with i know the satin's going to have a wireless controller very very soon mm. from retro bit um and as it as well the dreamcast um and i've got a ps2 which uh, there was loads of like cheap wireless controllers for that so i've got a decent one because a lot of them are very very crap but i've got a decent one um for that um good thing is the ps2 covers me for ps1 as well um so there's my ps3 but it's a bit patchy on how well certain games work um and the n64 there was a wireless controller actually by retrobit but it got really bad reviews so I haven't bothered going for it. Um, the trouble is, it's the analog stick. They're very... Um, the Nintendo ones are made in a very particular way, and they behave in a very particular way. If it's slightly off, it completely destroys playing a game with it, funnily enough. Try Didn't any third-party controller. Sorry, just to go off-topic for a second. Yes. Um, I don't know if you remember or you saw on my Instagram, I, I actually got one of those retro fighters N64. Yeah pads and and i've literally i, I got it I, i'm gonna I'm gonna lie here six months ago i don't know five months ago and it was sitting in a box in the living room and i've oh, actually great, yeah and i've actually just set it up and it and and, and it just feels 100 percent natural yeah, everyone says that's a great controller yeah and it, 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 it sort of feels sort of like um uh, I got wireless one. I got to yeah. make a wireless one that's the I, thing if they do, I'll definitely be sort of trying to grab one of those. But it's it's a really impressive little pad, and I, for, and it just feels like I'm using the old pad, but this one feels completely different. It's, it's shaped still, like a 360 pad, isn't it? Yeah, Very exactly. similar, kind of, yeah. But it just feels completely natural, and all the buttons are in exactly the right places. Um, and I, and I and I couldn't recommend it, you know, en enough. If, if you know, Trev. Go out there and, and, and grab yourself one. And uh... I do like the original controller. A lot of people hate it, but I think they could they hate it because they're comparing it to other consoles. But then the other consoles, that controller was good for those for those consoles. Mm. The N sixty four pad is perfect for the N sixty four. The games that are on it. The uh -huh. only time it struggles a little bit if there's a port of a game that's on other consoles and they've had to shoehorn the N sixty four controller on it. Mm. Um, that's where the, it's a little bit finicky, but. You know, Mario 64. Well, I, I think it's, yeah, well, we'll go off the controllers in a sec, but the N N64, the original pad, the only problem, I, I never actually like using the D-pad on it. If you, no, I, I, can't, that, I can't really yeah. think of any games I really had to use the D-pad. Mortal but Kombat just, Trilogy. There you go, Mortal Kombat Trilogy. Killer Instinct if, as well, wasn't it? It was on that, yeah. Yeah, if you got to use the D-pad, that never felt quite in the right position and it was always like a little bit of an afterthought. It's weird, uh, isn't it? Because they made great D pads, like my, mm, well, they invented Nintendo, them, they? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what happened with the N sixty four one, but yeah, great annoying. Yeah, so not not any sort of wireless controllers for that at the moment. Uh, well, there was one, like I said, by Retrobit a few years ago. Very hard to get it, 
actually, but it's a bit crap. So, um, well, that's yeah. they probably stop making it now. One, they stop making it, yeah. one thing we were actually listeners, we were arguing earlier on in the week on WhatsApp. We were we we're at each other's throats, we were throwing Probably. examples at each other. Now, Trevor likes to mod his machines to have HDMI out, and I was saying, No, no, Trevor, that's not the way to go. You've got to use RGB. So, Trevor, yeah. explain to me the benefits of having a HDMI mod on, on some of these old consoles. Would you recommend it? What are the plus and minuses of it? So there's a few that are, it's worth doing it to. Well, it depends mm. on how worth what worth me worth is to you. But um, there's, I mean, there, there's a company called uh, Pound that makes some HDMI cables for old consoles. Like there's mm. one for the Xbox original Xbox, um, and that's about forty dollars, thirty dollars. You've got to get it from the states. Um, it, but it's it's nearly as good as the Xbox component cables, which are brilliant, and I have those. I connect my Xbox via component, mainly because there's a lot of 720p games on it. So you actually are getting, you know, whereas the PlayStation, not so much. Uh, there's a few HD games, but literally a handful. There, there's a few dozen on uh, the Xbox, so you really get the benefit from it. And my Xbox is modded, so it's got lots of like emulators and stuff, and they all look great uh, through the component cables. But yeah, these guys have made a HDMI cable, so if your TV hasn't got old ports, like SCART, like component... Um, this will be a godsend because it means you can play your Xbox through just the HDMI, or maybe you just don't want to have you, you, you haven't got enough sockets on your SCART switch, or you're using your component cables for uh, your component for something else. Um, it's it's great for that, and they also make one uh, for I think they're making uh, they make they made a Dreamcast one. Mm. So again, but people have said the quality isn't so great on that. It's about mm -hmm. RGB mm -hmm. quality. Yeah, it's um, it's a RGB and. Um... Uh, and 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 the VGA, but the problem is you still get the same problems you get with the VGA. Is a lot of games are just, just won't work with it. Exactly, yeah. So you lose. So you got that to consider. Um, the one that I would I would like. I'm not too bothered about those cables because because the uh, the ones that exist anyway are pretty good. Um, mm. The bane of my life at the moment, as I say, I'll, I'll talk more detail in a minute about the SCART switch sort of situation because there are ways around that. Um, but yeah, the, the the big one is the N64. There's the um, Ultra HDMI mod for it, which mm. is extremely expensive unless you can do it yourself. Um, it's practically like a well, it, well, it's a board that you can you have to solder onto an N64. Sort of goes between the video chip and the output, the video output jack that uh, that you have on the back of the N64. Uh, but it replaces the that, that jack basically with a HDMI, um, and it also so basically, the layer of sort of fudge and smudge that, that the the analog signal would spit out onto your TV that is is a lot better with RGB, but terrible on composite and still not great and very blurry and soft compared to a a Saturn or a PlayStation or any other retro console really because of the way that N sixty four graphics work with the anti aliasing being like overkill. Um, this completely clears that up and it looks as sharp as like a PS one game on like uh, on RGB. But you're looking at if you wanted to get one pre-modded. I mean, you can pick them up on eBay. People are charging about three three hundred and fifty quid. Oh man, one pre-modded, uh, and they sell at that price. That's not just people just plonking on at that price, hoping someone will buy. It. Um, people do actually buy them for that price. Um, uh, you, or you could send off to someone to for someone to do it for you if you've already got the NT4, and you're still looking at a couple hundred quid then. So very expensive, but that is the one I would probably think you get the most benefit from is the N64 because the jump in picture quality is bigger than even going from composite to RGB. Um, and you could just use a HDMI cable with it, which is obviously you know great for you know uh, cable management and getting everything into HDMI sockets and getting rid of the old SCART sockets. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm very fond of the N64. Um, so it's a console that I would be thinking about doing that once I've got someone gives me 350 quid. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so you wouldn't consider that that mod then yourself? N not on the N64 because I, I like the setup I've got. I think that gives me a lovely crystal clear uh, picture, and I, I, I just think having it on a big 14 inch TV, it would just look so stretched out, and it. it it, it won't look great and um actually, actually you reminded me of a, of a story when i used to work in uh, dover in the weatherspoons pub 
Uh, wow. <laughs> there you go. There's, there's a bit of knowledge. Um, yeah. It's your favourite pub anyway, isn't it? Well, yeah, exactly. The Eight Bells in Dover. Great pub, great yeah, pub. Yeah. And there was a guy who used to always come in. And we, all, we all got to know him. He was a real nice guy. Him and his mates were coming. And then one night, you know, we had a few drinks after. He said, oh, come back to my house. I've got a GameCube. No, I've got an N64. This is showing my age. And so, oh, you know, I was, we were all back to his house. And we're playing Mario Kart on, on. But he had one of those massive, great big, like 60-inch um oh, rejection. Exactly. and it was that and i was like oh great oh wow we're playing it on this massive screen which was good and a novelty but i was just thinking the pitch just looks so washed out and it just looks so awful yeah that's <laughs> the thing because that was like was the amazing. Ultimate, they were kind of the ultimate in tvs because that was the way you would get a 40 to 50 inch tv in the in like the 90s is these big, huge rear projection TVs. But the trouble is the image was just like, yeah, it was so sort of pale and washed out. Because in theory, if they were any good, like if they were kind of matched a CRT, that would mm. be, be the TV to get, wouldn't it? If you wanted to have game, old school gaming on a huge screen, yeah. that would be the way to do it on paper. But, but, but unfortunately, the image is very poor. Um, it was really meant for watching laser discs on wasn't it, I think, in well, those, I those think days. Was, Even that wouldn't look great. It, it, it was just, you know, that's the, um, I think, the best way to, maybe maybe films look better on there. I, I, I don't know. I've, I've, I think I've ever only ever seen one of those about two or three times. Yeah, um, yeah. But I'll tell you what I am interested in. Um, I was just actually looking it up as, as we speak. Is there's a little um, GameCube HDMI mod you can yes. get. So I wouldn't mind doing that because some of the games are, of course, in full ATI and, you know, things like that. So I think that would look a little bit better. Well, there is actually a cable, I think, um, that just goes straight in the, the multi-out at the back, like an adapter. that, that, gives that you Actually, that's what I was talking yeah. about. Yeah, the little adapter rather than any sort of mod. You just plug it in, then plug your HDMI cable in, and, and away you go. Yeah, the GameCube's got really nice... Um, um, output with a com component um lots of progressive scan games there's a similar um adapter for the ps2 that mm. lets it output um through through a hdmi it plugs into the to the just the video out output and it gives you a, a hdmi socket trouble is um you can't play ps1 games um through that because the hdmi standard doesn't support anything less than 480p and ps1 games are uh, 240p Oh, so it's just for the, obviously the PS2. Yeah, yeah. So basically, oh. if you plug it in through that, you won't be able to play PS1 games. You'll be able to play PS2 games, but mm. not um, PS1 games. It will just give you a black screen. I found that out when I got one of those. And um, it looks good. It looks about the same as a component c connection. Um, but yeah, you just lose the ability to, to play PS1 games, which you don't if you just go through a component connection. That, they still work fine. Um, yeah, I mean, so for H PS1 HDMI, you can just use a PS3 because um, uh, that's the, that's the, you know that's obviously built in backwards com compatibility. Mm. I don't know if I don't think there's any mods or anything for the PS1 for that. It's probably I guess people don't think it's a bit redundant, isn't it? If you can just play them on the PS3 um, for I, HDMI, I think so. Yeah, that's the problem with the well, not the problem with the PS1. Um, that's probably a good thing, but I mean, the best you lead you can get for a PS1 is is an RGB SCART. And it's got good RGB SCART quality as well. So exactly. But yeah, th there's the dilemma um, touched upon earlier of uh, you know the sockets because now you're finding that. Uh, so I have all of my stuff plugged into a 4K TV. I don't use a CRT. And with mm. the right equipment, you can get really, really good results. Like, like I said, looking like you're playing on an emulator. Um, oh. And obviously, things are stretched out, but you can also use your settings to give you a four, three, four by three image, so it looks the same. Um, and uh, make sure you're using game mode uh, so you, you would minimize any lag. Uh, I don't think I've had really any trouble. I've got one of these game mode. I don't really notice any lag or anything. I, I'm quite uh, play just as well as I would like on a CRT. I'm sure there is a bit of la a, a more lag than that, but, I, but you could reduce it greatly. Um, using good, I um, mean, the trouble with my 4K TV is it hasn't got a SCART socket. So for for the time being, I don't have the best setup. I'm not going to claim that I do. The sort of you, yeah, you have to go back to those, you know, my life in gaming guys. They have the they have the absolute top of the tree possible setup you can have. But um, I've got a cheap um, eBay sort of thirty pound 
HD SCAR to HDMI adapter, and it works fine. You know, the picture yeah. is pretty good. Um, you know, really pretty sharp and crisp. Um, I know it could be better, but um, until I get the money to buy the high end versions of that, like uh, the Frame Meister or the open source scan converter, which are other sort of analog to HDMI adapters, which are mega high quality and have, can fine tune the image. Mm. So it comes out looking perfect, like again, like playing on an emulator on a PC. Um, but they're very for like hundreds of pounds. Um, well, the OS, the OSSC, that that's not too expensive. I, I that's a couple hundred, isn't it? One hundred and fifty or something. I, I want to say one hundred and fifty. It, it's around that amount, and that's uh, probably what I'll get. Yeah, the Frame Meister's. A bit I, th crappy. I think the Frame Meister is almost. They they sort of make them and discontinue it. They make some really? more and yeah. discontinue it, and and it um, hasn't got a SCART socket on it. It's not got a big SCART jack, has it? You've kind of got to have an adapter to go to that. It has like an S video type jack. Uh, yeah, I think you need to buy a little adapter. It's, it's not it's not an S video. I think it's similar to an yeah. App. It looks the same. It's not literally S video, is it? It passes the right signal through for RGB, but yeah, it's not built in. So you have to. I think they do include it, don't they, or something? Exactly. Uh, yeah. So there's so yeah. So ultimately, I want to get something like that, but I'm using a cheap op cheaper option at the moment. And obviously, I've got a a, a, a SCART switch. I did mm. have a Bandridge, but it failed. Um, got a great picture quality with uh, with that. I'm using a, a sort of a Mad Cats one at the moment that I've had for years. And it's all right. It's actually not that far behind the Bandrich. Um, it's manual, so you've got to sort of jump up and mm. flick the button on it to go to the right connection to, to the one that you're trying to play. Um, there is a bit of noise in the image, though, and it is noticeable. But when you're gaming, you try and you're just playing the game. You don't, you don't necessarily, your eyes aren't fixated on the noise. Um, and it's not really, really bad. Uh, but the trouble is it's only got four sockets on it. You know, and I've got sort of like like six, seven um, consoles that use SCART. So ultimately, I want to get a, a Hydra, which is this, uh, I think, a dude in Poland who makes these super high-quality SCART switches. He does a, a like a super version, which has 16 sockets. There's a huge long thing um, with all these sockets in, uh, but he does one that's only – there's just eight um, so I might grab that, but it's yeah, not not cheap because mainly because it's a guy that kind of hand builds builds them. It's not a big factory where you can just make order thousands of them and sell them for cheap. It, it's about 150 pounds to get one of these. Mm. So, but I'm thinking it's probably worth it because uh, I'll get that. That'll be the next thing I'm going to get for my setup in terms of video improving stuff. Because all my SCART cables, I'm pretty sorted out with. I've got all the good retro game um, cable ones. They're all good. Um, just need to get my NES modded, um, which I think I'm going to do for RGB, and that'll be a uh, and that'll go in SCART. And I'll get this um, this Hydra thing. Um, get just to get the one that's got the eight jacks on it. But yeah, the quality is really good. Again, the My Life in Gaming guys they actually they actually feature that um, uh, the the Hydra um, in terms of you know SCART. I switch, think I've seen it. It's sort of made out of clear plastic, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah, and it's got a, an output that goes into either an old school telly or um, HD TV. So that's what I'm probably going to get next from for for my setup, and also you know it reduces the wear on on you know pulling cables in and out and all that kind of stuff. They can just sort of sit there, and it's automatic as well. So when it's plugged in and it senses a signal um, from one of your consoles. Um, it, it, it will pass that through to the TV um, so you don't have to sort of get up and hit a big switch. I think it's also got the switches as well. So you can manually flick to a particular jack that's, that you've got, you know, you want to switch to if you happen to have a couple of consoles on at once, I guess, or something. Um, so, yeah, so there's that. Again, very expensive, though. Um, but that's kind of the way to go if you want to try and avoid... Uh, I think the mid-range thing is a bandridge. Um, but they're a little bit hard to get. You might have to pay about 40, 50 quid for a bandridge. And mm. you can often get them in sort of three, four, and five switch, uh, five way. And I had one, and when it was working, it was good. Uh, it was an automatic one as well. Um, but it just died. Uh, just got, I, don't, I don't hear reports of them being notoriously bad in terms of reliability. Um, so don't worry if you find one. It's just my one, I think, that was just a bit, a bit, um, you don't. I mean, you just have. A, you, you, I guess you have. You said you got a switch, haven't you? Uh, a SCART switch. No, no. I, I just. 
it's just one cable from the back of the machine directly into the TV. Oh, you only have, yeah, you only have yeah, the one. Yeah, just, just have to have the one. I, I don't want to go through a switch. I want to try and keep the best, uh, you know, the, the best sort of video um, I possibly can. And, you know, that might be, you know, not quite the best way to go, but... Um, that is yeah. a good point, actually. You do the more sort of things in between the console and the TV does does add signal degradation. That's Hopefully, right. it's not perceptible or it's very minimal. Often, you might get maybe the picture will be slightly darker um, or a tiny bit softer. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, with a like I said, one of those expensive SCART switches that going into a, a, you know a decent analog to HDMI thing like a Frame Meister, if you really got the money. Or uh, an OSSC, um, you can get something that looks as you know, um, with you know, good good quality SCART cables going from the console to the switch, uh, SCART switch. Then you can get something that looks nearly as good as uh, like a, a an emulator, um, you know, really crisp pixels. But also, some of those consoles you might have to mod to get the RGB out of them that's sort of trapped in the video, you know, mm. code, um, like the NES, for example. But great for the ones that already have it built in. So yeah. Um, so yeah. So I think that's kind of that's basically our setups, isn't it? We've we've gone through. Yeah. So I'd love to hear your setups. I'll put it in the comments on YouTube or check out my uh, my life in game. We mentioned them, haven't we, a couple yeah. of times? But they are literally the kings. Uh, I think they've kind of probably what has inspired us to make sure we get the best cables and why the best mm. cables are the best cables and all that kind of thing. Really fascinating stuff, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. Cool. Well, in that case, um, that is the end of episode 40. And we hope we helped you out with, you know, trying to figure out how to set up your old consoles with either a CRT, like Stu has got I me mean, out of curiosity. Did you buy that CRT or? I did, yeah. I, I bought it. It was, it was is quite... it a PVM? They always say P the no, Sony PVM. Yeah, I, I, haven't, I haven't got one of those. For one, they don't have sound out, so you've got to link them into a stereo system. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And you might get a slightly better picture, but I haven't, I haven't got one of those. And then you have to get special cable adapters because they're all designed for you know TV studios. Yeah, they haven't got SCART um, sockets of vein as such. They've got weird sort of break uh, sort of. You know, the actual three cables aren't in a case and a nice thing like a SCART socket. It's a, They're sort of separate. Yeah, they have to be screwed in or something exactly. weird. Exactly. So I, I just bought it off uh, eBay. I think someone had it on there for an auction, and it, it was going for, you know, I think my bid was £10. At this, so I messaged the guy, oh, you know, we went it a week early and it sent it to me for a tenner. I'll come and collect it. And he called, oh, no, he said, no, I've had a lot of interest. So a week went past, and I won it for ten pounds. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I was like, "Oh, well, I'll, so I went, I went and got it." And he, he was a nice guy, no sort of hard feelings or anything. Um, yeah, so I've, I got I got that, and it's a beautiful TV. But on, honestly, the, these days you can get Bang and Olsen TVs, Samsung TVs, Sony TVs, CRT ones that will give you absolutely a golden picture. And also, so, you know, you can play light gun games. Exactly, light gun games for absolutely next to nothing. Yeah. So, um, don't, don't get a rear projection TV though. <laughs> don't, don't get a rear projection TV. Obviously, try and get a CRT uh, TV to play your retro games. And but uh, there are good solutions for HD TVs as well. But you might have to spend a bit of money. <laughs> exactly. Cool. Right. Okay. So we're definitely at the end now of episode. Definitely the end. Little extra tidbit for you there. Thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, where can you find us, Stu? Uh, you can find us at uh, consoleshock.co.uk. Oh, no, consoleshock.net. Be nice if I got it, eh? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. oh, that, that, was, that was £2 more a year. Not, of course, yeah. Yeah, I can't find that. Um, okay, you can find us on YouTube. Uh, just search Console Shock. Official. And yep. then... You can find us on Stitcher. You can find us on iTunes. Um, yes, I think you've got most of the episodes up now, haven't you? Because we've had to do it sort of piecemeal due to the sort of limits on how much we can upload, isn't it? Yeah, they all, they all go up now a day or two later. So I think I originally, when I moved into my new flat, my actual computer where they're all stored was sort of, you know, it was all piled up in the corner, not set yeah. up. Now I've got a desk. Now there's no excuses. So, uh it's Thursday, so you'll send this to me tomorrow, Trev. I'll upload it tomorrow night. 
And, cool. um, so if you listen to iTunes, hopefully you'll listen to it on Friday night or Saturday morning. And uh, yeah. Or Stitcher as well. And also visit Play Nation Games. Like I say, check out the Facebook of Play Nation Games as well, because often they'll post any new sort of really cool pickups that they've got in on the store, and they can post them out to you as well if you can't make it down to the store. Exactly. Yeah. All right, cheers, everybody. We'll see you in the next one. No problem. See you later.